So in this video, we're going to discuss a very basic motivation for the definition and idea of homology groups. And perhaps eventually we'll get to more sophisticated applications that might show up in algebraic geometry or algebraic topology. Um, but it's also important to just develop some of the abstract machinery in the background. Uh, so towards the end of uh, a motivation, let's consider a morphism, a homomorphism of abelian groups. We'll just consider abelian groups uh, throughout to make our lives easier. Uh, and let's attach on this map iota, which just, just maps uh, what I'm calling zero, the trivial group, uh, with the obvious map sending the one element to zero as it has to, to be a homomorphism. And I'm also going to denote a, a map, which I'll mark by zero as well, because it's going to send uh, everything in the group H to the one element zero of the trivial group. Okay, so just to make some seemingly benign observations here, the image of iota, well, it simply contains one element because we're mapping one element and it's forced to be the identity. And since phi is a homomorphism, we know it sends the identity of G to the identity of H. So the image of iota is contained in the kernel of phi. Uh, likewise, if you think about the image of phi, well, that's contained in H, and absolutely everything in H gets sent to the identity in the trivial group. So everything in H is in the kernel of the zero map. So the entirety of the image of phi is also contained in the kernel of the zero map. Okay, so that doesn't seem to be saying too much at this point. But let's consider something. Since the image is contained in the kernel of phi, we can consider the quotient of the kernel of phi by the image of iota. And in particular, let's think about the case when this quotient is the trivial group itself, isomorphic uh, to the trivial group. Well, that only happens uh, in the case that the kernel is equal to the image of iota. And we know that the image of iota is the trivial group. So that means that the kernel of phi is isomorphic to the trivial group or that it only contains one element. Uh, in other words, this would tell us that phi is injective. Likewise, let's think about what happens with the kernel of the zero map modulo the image of phi. Now, if this was also the trivial group, again, that would tell us that the, uh, in this case, the image of phi would have to be the equal to the kernel of the zero map. But the kernel of the zero map is all of H. By definition, it sends the entirety of H to the one element, the identity element of the trivial group. And so this is really encoding the information that phi is surjective. Now, I realize it may seem like we've, uh, so, in this case, if, if phi is injective and surjective, uh, we know that it's a bijective homomorphism. In fact, it's an isomorphism of groups. And it may seem like we've really done a lot of jumping around here, talking about quotients and not really gained much. It just sort of seems like a fancy way of describing bijection. Uh, however, sometimes when we have complicated spaces, sometimes cutting things down by quotients can give us a better idea of uh, what's going on. Sometimes a quotient can be easier to understand, and it can also sort of give us a, a, a measure of 
how far off uh, a map may be from being injective or surjective. So for example, if the quotient of, of phi by some, uh, by iota, you know, if this is some other finite group, say, then its size could be some sort of measure of injectivity. So towards this end, let's talk a little bit more generally. I'm gonna let the symbol a dot denote um, a sequence, possibly infinite, possibly finite, either way, uh, of abelian groups with maps coming out of them, uh, going into uh, each other. So in particular, the map uh, phi sub i is be going to go from the group uh, ai to ai plus one. And we're gonna say that this is a complex if it happens that the image of phi sub i is contained in the kernel of phi sub i plus one. So as we noted the somewhat trivial observation, uh, if we have a homomorphism of two groups and we have these sort of trivial maps with the trivial groups on either end, and this gives us a complex. And we're going to say that the complex is exact uh, at i, we should specify, if the image of phi sub i is exactly equal to the kernel of phi sub i plus one. So finally, we come to the definition of the ith homology group of our complex. And this is defined whether or not the, the complex is exact. Uh, it is going to be the quotient of the kernel of phi sub i plus one by the image of phi sub i. And so what's happening then is homology groups are a measurement of the exactness of different parts of some sequence of abelian groups. And in particular, this can give us important information about groups such as injectivity or surjectivity. But we'll also see eventually that this can play plays a a major role in things like algebraic geometry and algebraic topology, even in group theory itself, we can set up uh, complexes and homology groups in some pretty complicated ways that, that give us a, a rich source of information for investigating more complicated mathematical structures.